officer. The White House has called on contract managers to do their part to fight climate change. Let's pick things up there with Steve Schooner, professor of government procurement law at George Washington University, and Tim Cook, president and CEO of ASI Government. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's um, let's start by talking about uh, the Biden administration and the new executive order on climate change. Um, Tim, how do you expect that to play out for procurement officers? Yeah, so it specifically calls out procurement as a major force for good uh, in tackling, they call it tackling the climate crisis. Without a lot of specificity, uh, it, it really orders folks across the government, government wide, to do their part. Mm -hmm. Steve, how significant do you think this is? Well, I think it's really significant in terms of signaling, but there's a lot of work to be done. I mean, the good news is people are starting to realize from current events, fires out west, flooding around the world, unbelievably high temperatures, that climate change is real and it is an evolving crisis. But the real challenge for our community is an executive order is one thing, but telling procurement officials what to do, how to make choices, how to move markets, that's going to be hard work. Tim, I know you're watching a, an executive order yet to come that, that's going to give more detail there. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, it's evolving, uh, going through uh, FAR cases, so-called FAR, Federal Acquisition Regulation, uh, casework uh, with the legal teams uh, to make sure that they get on paper so that contracting folks know what to do uh, with the direction. And as, um, you know, as this plays out for these people, is it going to be uh, different training, different tools, other things that I'm not thinking of, all of the above? I think the short answer is all of the above. And one of the things that we're really excited about is we're working with NCMA, the National Contract Management Association, to create a community of practice. And we're going to be rolling out activities, a series of webinars between now and December. But what we're looking for is to recruit the coalition of the willing. We need strong leaders who are committed to fundamentally changing behavior so that we can create a brighter and a sustainable future for our children and their children. But it's going to be hard. Tim, I assume that this is going to look different agency to agency somewhat. Is that right? Yeah, so it will. And it'll be um, somewhat up to the leadership of the agency. So there's a strong leadership component here. Uh, and I think people need to feel that leadership uh, in order to want to do this. Uh, even though plenty of uh, plenty of motivation should be their children and grandchildren, because uh, that's who we're affecting. But but I think that it's not just agency to agency. It's going to depend on markets and specialties. For some people, merely becoming familiar with Echo labels, like for example, Energy Star and Lead are two of the more successful Echo labels that we've seen real progress. But for others, for people that do big procurements, it's going to be learning about life cycle costs and externalities or effects. So in other words, why do we pay a price premium to avoid the fossil fuel solution? That's going to have a high level of complexity, and we're hoping that people can start moving up that learning curve. You know, a stereotype, of course, of, of government is that it is hard to move quickly. Do you think that there are um, provisions here that will allow them to move fast on, on this? Because I know it is a, a high priority for the administration. So it'll vary across the government. I think some people will move out really sharply, like folks like EPA and DOE and the, uh, the people who have been doing this for a long time. Right. And they already have developed a lot of the infrastructure. You know, what does it mean to count greenhouse gas? Uh, you know, and how do you do that? Um, so they're going to take off really fast. Um, and others who haven't been there probably will take some time to build that base, that base of understanding. Right. And the macro level change obviously is going to take a long time. But each individual procuring official in their procurement, they can make a difference. So not buying that fossil fuel solution in this procurement. That's the way we start moving the needle. Whether you get the momentum later and how fast it comes, that can't be any individual's problem. That's a leadership issue, as you say. But what we do want is we want to find the procurement officials who are thinking proactively, who want to make a difference, to start learning the tools and learning how to assess things differently so that they can make good decisions for the future. And this certainly seems like it's going to have some, some consequences for industry. Tim, do you want to speak to that a little so bit? So industry is well ahead. I would say they're at least a decade ahead of where the government is right now. Uh, and those that's just volunteer, right? They, they volunteer to, and there's some pressure from the marketplace to want to invest in and buy from companies that are climate sensitive, uh, as opposed to like, just destroy the environment and we don't care. So they're motivated uh, uh, to, to do the right thing when it comes to climate and they're already there. And so I think Tim's absolutely right that industry's ahead of us, but other governments around the world are ahead of us. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 
are a full step ahead of anything that we've contemplated at this point, and we're starting to see good lessons learned from around the world. But the other thing that I'd add to it, in addition to industry, is I think the consumers get it. And so not everybody, but there are plenty of people in our own decisions every day. We buy the cleaner solution. We decide not to do that thing that's harmful to the environment. And that's the way we're going to get incremental change. Can we pivot for a minute also and talk about um, CMMC, which I know is an area of, of attention for industry. Um, where do you think we're headed with that? How is that going, Steve? So short answer is difficult, complicated, <laughs> expensive, uh, fraught. But I also think that it raises the much larger question that for the procurement professional today, this work is hard. It's hard to be a contracting officer anyway, but it's hard to balance all of the different requirements and they're all important. But I guess if I only get one message today, it's that all those things are important, but we need to start thinking about sustainable procurement because we need to fundamentally change behavior. It's not the CEO's fault that the CMC isn't fully evolved and they don't know what to do, nor does industry. But I think that's, it's a challenge and it's one of many they're gonna have to balance. Tim, did you wanna yes, weigh in? Yes, I mean, C CMMC is, is great and needed. Um, climate is needed for a different reason, to paraphrase Steve. Like if we mess that up, we may not be here. And the, the physical environment truly does matter in a way that it's hard for us to even imagine right now. I think the next 10 or 20 years, it's gonna be interesting, <laughs> uh, darker, uh, more floods, more fires, more droughts, uh, m more mass migrations. Um, it's gonna really come home and hit people where they live in their wallets and in their homes and in their businesses. And to Tim's point, one thing that we haven't really talked about is when we say sustainable procurement, on the one hand, there's the issue of buying the environmentally friendly solution, but there's a whole other aspect to this, and the DOD is actually ahead of most of the agencies on that. We need to make everything more sustainable and survivable. We know there will be more flood flooding, so we have to build walls higher. We know the temperatures are going to be hotter. We need more air conditioning in the north. We need stronger air conditioning in the south. And so the people who are being proactive are thinking about buying differently, but also planning for a very, very different environment that we're going to live in sooner rather than later. I, I think, Steve, you make an interesting point also about the increased number of demands on contracting officers. What does that mean for, for recruiting, for retention, for training? Um, it seems like quite a, quite a load. Well, this is the nature of our business and it's been like this forever. We did some real damage in the late 1980s and 1990s by cutting the acquisition workforce. And we did some great things with Dawi and Klinger Cohen in terms of raising standards. But like so many other things, if organizations understand how important procurement is to their mission and they make these jobs attractive, people will come. But one of the most frustrating things to me on this issue is the Biden administration puts out a climate change EO creates a climate crisis task force and doesn't include the Office of Federal Procurement Policy. Well, if you want leadership from the procurement community, give us leadership. Give us an OFPP administrator that's going to talk the talk and let's get going. Anything to add on workforce, Tim? So the, so the workforce is incredibly good at what they do. Um, this just makes it harder. It's not appreciated already how hard it is to do what they have to do. They have to balance all of those secondary objectives that Steve's been talking about, cyber and, and, and uh, diversity and inclusion and everything else into one procurement or into a series of procurements. It's not easy.